for the presentation, Repopsy, the Open Repository of Psychological Instruments in Serbian, written by co-authors and Alexandra from Department of Psychology and the Institute of Psychology here at the University of Belgrade. Thank you, Nadita. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting us to present our Open Repository of Psychological Instruments in Serbian. You can read more about it in the conference article that I wrote together with Lili Lazarevic, Danka Poric, and Iris Vezer. We call our repository Repopsi, for short, from the words repository and psychologia, which in Serbian means uh, psychology. We at the Laboratory for Research for Individual Differences started working on the repository in May 2019, and we opened it in uh, March 2020. The repository is hosted on the Open Science Framework, which is a free and open source web application. And if you're ever a participant in a psychology study, you are probably familiar with some of the types of questions we use. For example, you get a list of statements and you have to rate how much you agree or disagree with them. Researchers in social and behavioral science, as well as clinicians, often use various surveys, questionnaires, and tests. These instruments are used to assess personalities. And so if you want to use them in Serbia, we need to translate them and sometimes also adapt them to our cultural context. And as you would expect, a lot of instruments have been translated over the years, but there wasn't a centralized repository for these translations. And this meant that sometimes research teams were translating instruments that have already been translated, for example. Local researchers also developed new original instruments, but the opportunities to promote their work was limited. This is why we decided to establish a repository. It will make existing translations and adaptations more easily findable and reusable. And it should also increase the visibility of instruments developed by local and regional researchers. So on the road to a more reproducible scientific work, we are expected to share our data and our analysis code but also the tools which we used to collect the data from the participants. So our repository also helps increase the transparency and openness of the research process. There are currently 140 instrument records. 101 instruments are open access and available in the repository. 36 instruments are available only upon request. For example, tests that measure intelligence can't be made open because then the participants will learn the correct answers. Instruments are under attribution, non-commercial, share alike, Creative Commons license, and they can be used free of charge for academic research or education. Our rep repository is designed primarily for instruments in Serbian or instruments which were translated in Serbian or adapted for the Serbian population. We also welcome versions of these instruments in other languages, especially in English. And because of this, uh, our repository is not useful only to Serbian, but also to regional and international researchers. So if you wish to contribute to the repository, you can request a form from our lab. The form is in English and it contains detailed instructions and examples. In the first part of the form, you provide a brief overview of the instrument. So keywords, title, authorship and citation details, abstract and so on. And in the second part, you provide the actual instrument. So apart from the items, you may also provide instructions on how to, ad to administer the instrument. You can provide the rating scale and so on. Uh, 
uh, once the form is completed, you send it back to Lira. And you can also attach the code for calculating the scores on this instrument. All of the records are listed in an open inventory, which is available as a comma separated value file and as an Excel file. And the metadata in this inventory describes the instruments using the information from the contribution form. The inventory can be searched directly by users from the OSF application. So for example, if you are looking for instruments that are adapted for children, you can type that in the search box and easily find the instruments you need. Our repository is a project, which is the largest form of categorization on the OSF. It has been assigned a unique and a persistent URL, as well as the digital object identifier. The project has a wiki page, both in Serbian and in English, and it outlines the purpose of the repository. It gives instructions on how to use it and how to contribute. And it also outlines the terms of use and disclaimers. Every instrument is in its own component or a sub project within the repository. A component also has its unique and persistent URL and each contribution is documented as a separate file available in two open formats, in the open document text format and in the port portable document format or PDF. A component holds all of the versions, translations, adaptations and scoring codes of the same instrument. Each file also has a unique and a persistent URL and all files follow file naming conventions. There is a built-in version control which records all previous versions of a file. Tags or keywords can be added both to the project and to the components, and they are automatically indexed by the OSF search. And the project can be displayed in search engine results, for example, Google. There are uh, built-in publicly available analytics. For example, they, they show how many times a file has been downloaded, the number of unique visit, visits and popular pages over time. Uh, we have a maintenance team that handles all of the contributions. I'm the admin, uh, Lily, Danka and Iris act as supervisors. And Lira members Maria, Anna, Mia and Jovan are associates. They have handled all of the new contributions since March 2020. We follow a detailed manual and we collaborate on Google Drive, uh, which also acts as a backup storage for uh, the repository. The second backup is my USB drive. So uh, many of you are probably familiar with the FAIR data principles. They state that all research objects should be findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable both for people and for machines. Uh, we assessed the extent to which our repository has adopted these principles. So first, findability. The data is findable through a persistent and unique identifier. The metadata is rich and descriptive. The inventory, for example, specifies the URL of the component so users can access the instruments directly from the metadata. And finally, the metadata, all metadata is machine readable. Metadata also specifies instrument availability and terms of use, which makes the data more accessible. Although the repository uses a broadly shared language, the metadata is not represented using a formal knowledge representation language and it doesn't use semantic resources. Metadata links the instrument to its related resources, for example, a publication or an external website. 
However, these links are not expressed through relation types. Metadata uses relevant and accurate properties to describe the contents of the instruments, which makes them more reusable. Both metadata and data follow a standard recommended by the target community. However, some of the files are not machine readable, even though they're very human readable. So uh, our repositories data and metadata are mostly fair, but if we want to keep them fair over time, we need the repository to be trustworthy. That is why the trust principles have been developed recently. These principles are transparency, responsibility, user focus, sustainability, and technology. So first, transparency. We clearly state the mission statement and scope as well as terms of use. The work of the maintenance team is visible only once we get to the OSF stage, but not before that. Uh, the repository shows responsibility by following the standards of the target community and by adopting the FAIR data principles. It offers various data services, such as downloading files or a searchable inventory. Our maintenance team does the technical validation and documentation, but when it comes to quality control, we only informally check the contributors and their instruments. We rely on users to decide whether it is appropriate to open their instruments, and we rely on them to seek approval from original authors when needed. So user focus, the repository adapts to the needs and standards of the target community. We encourage users to describe the instruments in detail and to provide feedback on the repository. Users also have relevant data metrics available at their disposal. Next slide. Uh, when it comes to sustainability, we are still only just thinking about it, about long-term data preservation and we will have to plan for risk mitigation, disaster recovery, and so on. Next slide. And finally, technology. The repository relies on the open science framework for its secure, persistent, and reliable services. Next slide. In the future, we will use the FAIR data principles and the trust principles as guidelines to improve the repository. For example, we plan to make the instruments more machine readable, and we would also like to increase the transparency of the maintenance work. For example, we could collaborate in a public repository on GitHub. The contribution form can be offered in an online survey form apart from a spreadsheet. And we also plan in the future to promote our repository to a wider audience. So this conference was a great opportunity for that. Next slide, please. So our repository, Repopsy, is the first open access repository of psychological instruments in Serbia. Open repositories are essential uh, to open science practices, and they also make the research process more efficient. They're useful for researchers who collaborate on projects conducted across different countries and cultures. The RAPOPC is also used by students at our university who are learning how to develop and adapt psychological instruments. Next slide. Thank you for your attention. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We have a small audience here with <laughs> clapping. I hope you heard that. Um, you, you're on time despite all uh, I tried that happened. <laughs> you will have to edit my video a lot. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. It's completely okay. We have one question in the Q&A box. It's from Milica Shevkusic. She asked, uh, do you plan to assign DOI to individual instrument as well to increase their findability? Uh, yes, yeah, so OSF doesn't have the possibility to assign a digital object identifier to um, files, 
there is an option to assign it to components and we've discussed it internally and decided that it's best to just have a URL because um, a lot of the contributors also contribute their article, scientific article, which holds uh, this instrument and they would prefer for us to cite that digital object identifier and not the repositories uh, digital object identifier. So we we'll listen to our uh, community. <laughs> okay, thank you. And we have another question from Richard Queen. Maybe I didn't read it well. Um, uh, does Repopsy take requests for measurement translations? Um, um, could you maybe clarify this question? I'm not sure. Um, as I understand mean? well, uh, do you um, um, translate your instruments in another language, I suppose? Um, no, currently uh, our repository offers only the possibility to deposit already translated instruments and adapt it. For example, if you were a participant and then in an international project and you had to translate an instrument in Serbian, you can deposit it here. But uh, currently we are not requesting any translations for if we are not sure how we are going to use them. So, okay. but that's a good idea. <laughs> okay, thank you uh, for being on time <laughs> and fighting well with all. The okay, problems. thank you. I, I hope you all could follow my presentation. No, it, was, it was just fine. Um, I hope to see you next time in person. Yes. And stay well. Bye. Bye.